Hello, today we're going to be looking at the current iteration of Porta Cosmo. Uh, my, well, it's not even portable. I'm living a lie. I don't even know why I called it portable. I called it Porta Cosmo because I built it for, well, I began building it. There was only three boxes of it uh, for a residency in uh, Scotland. And it, the idea was that it's more portable than my Cosmo 2.0 synthesizer, which is a bit more big and on wheels. This one can fit in, a, in the back of a Ford Fiesta, the other one can only fit in the back of a van. And there's certain things on this that are not particularly thought through because I tend to do things before really thinking about it. But for instance, the cases, I haven't built covers on them. Uh, you'll notice that the modules are not sunk in like on the Cosmo 2.0. Cosmo 2.0, literally you could shove a bit of plywood on the front of it and it's covered up. This one, you'll have to put a bit of plywood and then a bit of like an embossed thing sticking out because they're all sticking out the front ways. I just wrap them up in uh, packing blankets and shove them in the car. Uh, but that means that, for instance, right here, we got smashed switches. So portable by name, but not portable by nature. That's what we're going to go with. Uh, so yeah, this uh, is the second iteration of it. It's got four cases. That's because I did Porta Cosmo 2. The other synthesizer, I use uh, something called MIDI, which is basically musical USB. It's um, It was a means to be able to connect both of the cases, there's two cases, and the controller case, all together via single cables. This meant it was easier to tour with because you just plop it on, plop them together, and just plug the two wires in, modular synth wired in, and most of the patch cables are just gonna stay where they're supposed to be. It's awesome, and I love doing it like that, but this is kind of like breaking away from that and going back to a different uh, method of uh, modular synthesis. There's lots of different ways of using a modular synthesis, so you can do it however you like. With that one, it's kind of heavyish electronic improvisational music and songs. This one, it's a little bit more like, oh, I don't know, sequencer-based and a bit more in old school in its uh, in its operation kind of songs, but then you can also make modular synths do anything else, like, you know, crazy chaotic things and weird, weird stuff like that. That's not really what this is built for, but you can still do it, because the idea is you unplug all the patch cables afterwards and you plug it back in and make another song. This is the second time I filmed this because I filmed it before and the thing that I made was sort of rubbish, was actually really rubbish. So yeah, there, there, there is that. When I built this for this Ramsgate Festival of Sound project that I did, I designed a few new modules for it. For instance, this one right up here, it's a matrix mixer, eight ins and four outs. That means you can plug um, eight inputs in at the bottom and you can choose where the outputs are between four outputs. So you can have it left, right, uh, let's say effect one, effect two, or something like that. If you, it's normaled, so there's a bunch of other jack cables. So if you wanted to, you could actually have it as a 32 input mixer because uh, you can block off uh, connections between the other outputs and just turn it into four separate eight channel mixers. I'll just get an oscillator plugged in. Some of these might not work. Yeah, yeah, here we go. I'll turn up the octave. That is coming out of one of your ears. I don't know whether that's left or right. I might have switched them around. It's left. Or it's right. It's my left, but your left. But my left, I don't know. And then this is right. So with, there's two different outputs there. But the cool thing is, is because it has got voltage control over every single knob, it's got a VCA over all of the knobs, what we can do is we could get a couple of jack cables and wire them into an LFO. This one right here is another Cosmo module. By the way, all of these are PCB-based Cosmo modules. Um, so uh, this is a quad LFO. It's four voltage-controlled funky LFOs. The idea is you can buy these projects and build them yourself. The information and links are below. But we're going to plug in the CV into this. Yeah, and then I'll plug the inverse of this CV into the one, the left channel or right channel. And hopefully, hopefully that's bouncing around. I've got to have a listen. Hey. I'll just do a different one. I'm going to plug in this triple oscillator over here that used to be in Cosmo 2.0. Now it's here because I swapped it with the tuner ones, you know. Anyway, we're, we're plugging in. Right, so we got three oscillators. Oh, that 
filter just always sounds really funky. It's like a distorting filter. The 114. The 1114, uh, which is also available in Eurorack format, but you can also get it in the PCB of the Cosmo format and the schematic if you want to make it on stripboard. It's available on the website. But... Anyway, um, we're going to plug in uh, this one right here, which is the 1158, and that is a voltage controlled envelope generator. And we're going to get the output of that, plug it into control to filter. There we go. Oh, we'll make it a little bit longer. And we're going to get another jack cable, and we're going to get that, even though it's already quiet, we're going to control the VCA, because it's got a built in VCA, so. Uh, so we're going to use this down here. This is a 16-step sequencer that's hiding right here. We're going to get the output of this, um, output of one of these uh, knobs sections, and plug it into the, oh, we need a longer jack cable. Plug it out of the output of row one, so it's only going to be uh, eight steps. I'm going to set it all to the lowest setting, but I'm also going to make it go through uh, this thing over here, the dual quantizer. I had it in the last uh, one in Fort William. What this one is, there's another one up here with multicolored knobs. It's very smooth. This will step it into musical notes. So I'm going to get the output of that, plug it through the quantizer, which is analog output. This is not one I've designed. Now we're getting a trigger out of this uh, because it's got trigger switches on this uh, sequencer. I'm going to plug it to the envelope generator triggerer, so it'll trigger this. Well, there we go. There's um, a sort of a baseline. So we've got an LFO here, low frequency oscillator. You can see if uh, I can speed it up and slow it down. And that is plugging into this, which is a clock divider. So we're using the LFO as a clock and we're dividing it down using this clock divider. I'm going to plug the output of the clock divider. I'm actually going to go half as quick as this. I'm going to plug this into a module that's over here called a multiple. It's actually a buffered multiple because I can't remember whether I buffered all of the inputs and outputs of these modules, so, well, the ones that I've done on stripboard. So I'm going to put it through this, which is going to completely separate all of the, all of the jack, just to kind of eliminate any crosstalk that might happen because I've just been rubbish and, you know, cutting corners when making strip lord really late at night. That is flashing to the speed of this, if I speed it up. So this is going to be the tempo. That flashing on and off is going to control the speed of everything. So. The output of this, there's four outputs that are buffered. We're going to plug it into the input of this um, step sequencer here. So this is going to bounce along. If I want to speed this up, I can, and slow it down. So this is going to be the trigger sequencer. You'll notice that this is all switches. These switches actually act the same as the switches on the bottom of this. It's just a more for-purpose module. Anyway, uh, we're getting the, the buffered output of the clock. I'm going to plug it into the forwards on the sequencer. <laughs> There we go. And then bring it in. Oh, I'll tune that a bit better.
back with that. So cut off into the foot output of the... Just gonna get a jack cable, uh, trigger this Bifaco kick all that I put behind a larger case because I ran out of time designing one and I really needed one. So I'm gonna just do on the beat. Go for a little bit quicker. The way to get variation with this sequencer is by literally by hand, so you're just flicking here and there. We've got two sequences here. I'm going to try and trigger one of them, this one right here, with a slower sequence. It's going to run at um, half, half the speed. Maybe not half, maybe even slower than that. So we're going to plug this into the drum sequencer, which is going to act like a clock divider. So that means that this sequencer is actually going to run at half the speed of uh, this one down here. Turn on a couple of these switches. I'm going to go for... Now this one should be going at a slower rate. Yeah, so it's in time with each other, but it's running at a slower rate. So if I bring up this. That's quite nice anyway, and there's no notes. to the input of the quantizer again so we're all on the same same scale and then we're going to plug the output of that into this just uh, get the uh, trigger trigger it via the output of this now we got that we're going to plug that this also into the mixer <laughs> the sound of it. I'm going to unplug this and try and get this in tune.
unedited version of me starting this and then ending it is over on my Patreon with all the swear words in between. So if you want to check that out, it is over there. And needless to say, that supports all of these projects and stuff and being able to put this together and do these videos and all these things. And also, you can download all of the WAV files and all of the MP3 files of all of the Port of Cosmo songs and samples from the Port of Cosmo there down below. Anyway, that's it from me. That's it from Port of Cosmo. And uh, yeah, if you love to see those good stuff, I'm good to try. I totally do. I've learned to talk. Thank <laughs> you.